ready to roll Saturday afternoon. Thankfully, the weather here in South Florida, a little better to, per se than a number of uh, different parts in the United States. Hope all our friends up in New York are staying warm and dry, but we're rolling here at 10 race Saturday afternoon at Gulfstream West. Ron Nicoletti, Jason Blew it alongside, and believe it or not, Ronnie, this is day number 20. We are officially at the halfway point of the meet. Halfway point, and as you mentioned, fast and firm, and uh, Jason has some relatives up there in uh, northern New York, up near Saratoga. He's going, let's check what the weather is, and it's snowing, and I was totally oblivious to the fact that it's, you know, happening up there. They're getting some bad weather up there, so uh, we're sort of lucky down here. Yeah, we really are. Starting to hit that real sweet spot, entering sort of the late October, early November, real shift from the summertime, which can be a little oppressive uh, during times down here in South Florida, and we do have that snowbird weather coming up. And speaking of snowbirds, some familiar faces back in town, or at least horses from some uh, high-profile operations like Christophe Kaman, who's running a couple of two-year-olds on today's card at Gulfstream West, Mike Makers in the mix, so that's good to see there. Even better, assuming you hit, was yesterday's payoff in the Stronic Five. We handled just under 100,000, give or take, in the pool. And how do you like that, my friend? Well over 15 Gs for just a $1 bet. I had three out of six and uh, missed those two races in California. Changing my... Uh, theory next week and put a little more extra time into those uh, California races. No, you were uh, right on the money here at GPW, Ronnie. Green Mansions, best bet yesterday. Horse wound up winning and paid about $10. So uh, Ronnie came through in both Gulfstream West races. Your biggest price, though, in fact, the two biggest prices came out in Cali. 2020, wrapping it up with perfect vision at Golden Gate Fields and a $16 an 80 cent winner in leg number two out there at Santa Anita Park. We'll do it again next Friday. I think there was a little confusion, at least what I saw online, and I just want to let everybody know and confirm the Stronic Five, even though October is ending, and this is kind of our <laughs> Halloween edition of the show uh, to an extent, we will have the Stronic Five moving forward into the month of November, and that includes next Friday, which is Breeders' Cup Friday, so hopefully you have some some extra eyeballs on the, uh, on the sequence, needless to say. Now, as far as the rundown on today's October 27 program. We've got one big carryover coming up after the early pick five and, of course, the super high five, and those will commence in the first of ten. We also have 100 entries running on today's card after scratches. So I'm not good with math, but I do know that averages 10 horses a race, which is pretty nice. That's the only one I could have figured <laughs> out in <laughs> Rainbow Six. It's, it's going to be well over $100,000. That's just the starting point today. And we ended, of course, with the final pick five on the afternoon. Finally, an easy math question, and you took it. I'm sorry, <laughs> dude. I am sorry. But again, you and I, I may have beat you if we were in math class together. And let's just say we were you know, born in the same year. I might have beat you in a, in a, in a tight nose yeah. there. That was never a strong subject. Yeah. to mine and go figure considering all the numbers and stuff in this game but we love racing and glad to have you on board everybody we are indeed fast and firm for this day number 20 of 40 of the autumn season here at gpw and let's try to get a little lucky i'm not good with numbers but i do know we're gonna try to wind up in the black today and not in the red with this early pick five that sees me and in fact a sequence that may have a couple of Short priced uh, favorites that are pretty tough to start things out, including our lucky dice in the first race today. Ronnie's gone with a touche on top and a seven horse field on the main track. Second race, I'm three deep there. Does that race, Ronnie, center around the drop-down vibrant spirit? Yeah, I thought so there, there from the Ron Spatz bomb. But I've got a lot of interest, and I'm glad you put that horse in your ticket with the uh, Pikes Peaks or Bust. That one coming in for Sarah Nagel. I thought that horse could be, run very well in there. Midnight on Broadway, the six, is my single in an $18 play. I had liked originally that horse and the rail runner, Il for Rome, but that horse is scratched, and boy... It almost looks, he's got to go out there and run dropping, but it, he almost looks unbeatable on paper now. Yeah, he did, was a big scratch in there and actually wrote it in red today, scratch him for own, so you can uh, see it there. So yep. I thought that changed the whole complexion of the race in Midnight on Broadway, probably a, the logical single. 
No stakes today at GPW, but a stakes quality field of Philly Amare turf sprinters in our featured fourth race, a high level allowance optional claimer that centers around. I think the nucleus of the of the race of the field, to be fair, is the number four Brandy's girl. I didn't single her with Midnight on Broadway looking so good in the race prior. But again, she's done some good things. And if she's set getting away from pay any price, the others could be in trouble. Yeah, she's beaten the boys in the past at that distance. She's really good. Uh, I, 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 we were talking about this before we came in the air. I might have missed that one. Got a little further down on my ticket. What a great race. Yeah. Guy to see Pink Mama come back, who's uh, you know just wins a lot of races. That is one fun race. And then you've got some uh, to wrap things up in, in the uh, back end, race number five. A couple of horses, Little Todd and La Leyenda, who have some recent respectable form in Miami Gardens against a very key layoff, drop down, new face, the whole ball of wax for Patrick B. and Cohn, the number six outside looking in. The others, if he runs, the others are going to be looking at him in the winner's circle. Yeah, absolutely. He's the one to beat, but he hasn't been seen since May 27th, so we'll see how that one runs, but I think he's the logical choice in that race. Sounds good. Now, for me, anyway, I want the four our lucky dice in the opener. My tagline, at least part of it, for the first in the pick five, Marcus Vitale, white hot, picked up another win yesterday. In fact, nearly ran first and second in a big 10 or 11 horse field in the Friday third race. And I just think he's saying, look, with the four R lucky dice, paid a little too much for this adios Charlie Philly, dropping her into the bottom. And Nick Juarez, the go-to rider for the barn is aboard. I just didn't know where else to go, my friend, in the opener. Well, I went with Touche, and this one is a move to the Elizabeth Doble's barn after the claim stretches out to three-quarters of a mile today after rallying five wide. Finished second was a three-to-five favorite that afternoon when going five-and-a-half furlongs right here at Gulfstream Park last time out. Like that one, our lucky dice on my ticket for all the reasons you mentioned. And, of course, on the inside, you knew this horse was going to take money, Kabo, drop into this level. Guess what? Robert Falcone, Jr., and he's got Paco Lopez on an inside runner, and that is the 75 for Evitism right now. I, I just thought you, you got the, the last the horse's last race, not pretty, yeah. but you got to respect the connections and, of course, the jock riding in great form. Fair enough. I mean, that's a horse yeah. that's got some good races going back to 2017. I'll try to shake things up at a price for a second with the deuce, Jubilant, who really, her race ended before they sprung the latch last time. She hit the gate. It just did not work out well for her. If she behaves herself, I think she's going to run a lot better. Moving on to race number two, we will hit the turf, and one of the neat sort of multi-tiered aspects of today's action at Gulfstream West is the fact that we've got five turf races, and this turf course is held up extremely well. We tend to run four, five, six races a day on the grass, and it still looks in great shape, and we will go to seven and a half furlongs with these two lifetime Philly Amare claimers, and perhaps this race no more complicated than a 4-10-6 cold try for the boys. We didn't agree on the cold super, <laughs> but, I mean, all kidding aside, Ronnie, if Vibrant Spirit is, is okay here dipping in for the bottom or 8,000, this horse is supposed to win. Yeah, plunge into that level. He showed good, good early speed and, it, and interest in the races before fading to finish fourth in a trio of races at the 16th level. Tried its best, kept finishing fourth, so Ronnie Spatch drops this horse down. Miguel Vasquez, another one, had a couple of wins uh, over the last few days. Good rider. He's going to handle the class relief today. As I mentioned when we were, you were showing your ticket, uh, the number 10 Pikes Peak or Bust is back in South Florida. I thought it had a couple of solid uh, turf outings up north. She finished second. That was against 25 maidens at Laurel. Then comes back and just blows the doors off the competition at Suffolk Downs. Sarah Nagel, Sammy Camacho atop the lightly raced four-year-old. This one, I can't, I'm intrigued by this horse today. Good good, good outfit here. Yeah. Whether it's Reed Nagel or Sarah Nagel yeah. calling the yeah. shots. They, you see the Nagel name, <laughs> you know they mean business. Very shrewd operation with Sammy Camacho and a very well-traveled gray filly by <laughs> Fort Prado from Tampa to GP to Maryland to Boston. Right back down here to glorious and sunny Miami Gardens with uh, Pikes Peak or Bust. Let's move on to race number three. Back on the main track, we go two turns here in a three-lifetime 6250 claimer in which early on, and I'm not surprised to see us basically have the 6-3 cold exacta. But before scratches came in, I looked at this race and I'm going, well, you got Il Faron off a good last race on the rail. And then the 6 midnight on Broadway, all the others look like they're in pretty, pretty deep water because they're not in good form. 
Ilfer owns a scratch. That leaves Midnight on Broadway with Miguel in for 62.50. Yeah, dropping to this level in the first start since following a, a monster two lifetime victory going to one turn mile at Gulfstream. Uh, but that was last January. Then comes back, has some trouble, obviously, in a 12 5 claim. That was during February. Yvonne Belso ready to get for the return to action. Pretty sharp drill in 47 and 3. And if this horse is ready, or it may be three quarters ready, yeah. the rest of this field is going to have a, a tough day. Definitely. I'd say I think three quarters, 80% <laughs> yeah. is probably accurate and not hyperbole. It's a pretty soft spot there for Midnight on Broadway to come back. And over my days, I've enjoyed or did enjoy quite a few the clock striking midnight <laughs> on good old Broadway in Saratoga Springs, New York, by the way, and just about on the verge of snowing up there <laughs> as we join you here at sunny Gulfstream Park West. Featured fourth is up next. Good field, as uh, Ronnie had mentioned earlier in the show. It's just uh, a quality-filled race with some very likable horses. In terms of being fan favorites, the three Pink Mama, who we're glad she's back with us here in South Florida, she's near the top of the list. But as far as prior accomplishment goes on the turf, nobody going in can touch what the four Brandy's girl has done. And here is perhaps her finest race to date. She does own six lifetime wins for trainer Eddie Broom, but this is going back, and I get it's a long time ago. We're talking late August of 2017, but this race noteworthy for a few reasons, um, the least of which she beat the boys that afternoon, and she's been beaten a couple of times over the last few years by Pandy Price. Yeah, she was. this was the Jupiter Beach. And that was her second consecutive victory at the time and really ran well in there. And it, you can just see she's just a special uh, mare. She runs great all the time. I just backed off a little bit because she hasn't run in a while. She hasn't been to the winner's circle in a while. But when the camera comes back on, you see a little bit of uh, maybe some egg on my face. I might have missed this one and put it a little further down. But I, I like the inside horse can hear a lot who you have in second and that's touch of bling yeah who's done some good things and you might not that this field is a layup by any means and look as brandy's girl who has spent a good chunk and i know she's had a limited campaign but to be fair in 2018 the majority of her recent races on her resume have been against the boys if she's right and she's on her game she's probably going to win but that being said there was a part of me that said, you know what, this is probably from front to back a bit of a dip in class for the one touch of bling who was obviously running, you know, prime time at Belmont and Saratoga over the spring and summer. Yeah, cutting back to five eighths of a mile after setting those swift fractions before weakening to finish six was beating three lengths. That was going five and a half, as you mentioned, up at Saratoga. That was a day that the turf course was listed as good. They were having rain all summer long, and that turf course was this side of good. It's Mike Maker, it's Paco Lowe. Lopez. You do the pace figures in this race. This one looks like the lone speed on the inside. And with Paco up, had to go that way. Now, I didn't know what to do with Escapade that I put on the ticket just because of the connections. Jonathan Thomas, MCL Jaramillo, three-year-old daughter of More Than Ready. This one might be a little bit overclassed in here. Yeah, she clearly does not have the experience nor the resumes of Touch of Bling to an extent Pink Mama and certainly Brandy's girl, but on the flip side of that, you get a lightly raced, well-connected filly who, unlike the others who in a way might have already hit their peak or plateau, the best is best is yet to come. There's a good chance with Escapade. Will it be today in a uh, pretty salty spot? And I did spend some time, about a minute, trying not to lose <laughs> a finger or two in front of the stall oh, of Brandy's did. girl. She is a feisty firecracker, my friend. Uh, tweeted that out uh, this morning. If you <laughs> want to take a look, give Ronnie, myself, and Gulfstream Park a follow on Twitter. But boy, it was tough to get close and even <laughs> pat her on the nose. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been to tweet out. You would have had missing that tweet finger that you do so well. I watch you all the time. Blah, 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 those tweets. Now, Pink Mama, I love this horse. 16 of 31, 16 victories from 31 lifetime starts. Want to show you stat on Gerald Bennett. Uh, when he ho goes with horses, just turf to dirt and sprints. He's 8 for 55, 15%, 35% in the money, dollar 40 return of investment. Pink Mama certainly does her best running on the main track. She's tried to turf. She's six starts, a win, a second, two thirds. Always liked this horse. She too might be you know, reaching a little bit for this in this level. On turf. On yeah, dirt, turf. The, oh, others, yeah, dirt. the others would be yeah. saying no moss, mercy, <laughs> mercy. <laughs> right. Turf might be and could very well be a different ball game, but it's good to have her back for veteran trainer uh, Gerald Bennett here on this Saturday afternoon, a Saturday that rolls ahead on the other side of this quick timeout on GPW Today.
whether you're at home or at the track. Have a stake in the race when you bet with Express Bet. Sign up for an Express Bet online betting account and receive up to a $500 sign up bonus. The Fall Turf Festival is underway at Gulfstream Park West. Mark your calendars because on Saturday, November 10th, Gulfstream will be offering eight steaks for Florida breads, three on the turf, totaling $600,000. There will be four races for two-year-olds, many with aspirations of competing in the winter and spring classics. Don't forget, you can watch and wager on Gulfstream Park West races in our world-class Silks Simulcast Center, located on the first floor at beautiful Gulfstream Park. Join us at Gulfstream Park and Gulfstream Park West on Saturday, November 10th. Two weeks out from that big millions prep preview day here at Gulfstream West. And like the man next to me said, mark your calendar Saturday, November 10th. There will be no Breeders' Cup hangover here in this part of the country. Let's try to build up a bankroll, though, shall we? What are we doing in the rainbow? Well, we went uh, with a ticket of $48.60 this afternoon. You see that almost approaching $100,000. And uh, you see, I went deep in these first couple of races. I, you know, the first three races on the that, card. That Don't is they, deep for you. Yeah, yeah. That, that is very competitive. But I did single a horse in here, and that is the number eight horse in race number eight and that is molly corbin six hundred and fifty thousand dollars as a weanling i believe and this it's unbelievable now didn't run that well on a synthetic track last time out just had a single somewhere three deep three deep in the end and i made a joke i was on the radio earlier today and i said i want to beat a rapoli horse in the last mm. race mm. with my long shot to three mega bucks debuting locally talking about guys in town mike trombetta is down here yeah. now so just thought that maybe this horse can beat those heavy heads in there and of course you know you got the false info and Thumbund Park for Christoph Clement and uh, Todd Pletcher. So going to try and beat them, but I'm using those two on the ticket. Sounds good. And that is the second of two potentially very solid two-year-old maiden races during the Rainbow Six. And coincidentally, the late pick five today at Gulfstream West. The seventh has four teen Florida bred two-year-old maidens in it and it's a dirt race and then you've got that good cash out nothing wrong with some maiden turf and a big field of two-year-olds and race number 10 at one mile on the grass but that's then race five is now and you're three deep to start things out and you and I taking an ice cold super in a race where we're gonna go six three four and one both of us with the layoff horse who again if outside looking in is ready to go we'll be seeing this horse and looking at him in the winter circle yeah we'll show you a stat on Patrick B. and Combe with a layoff of a 61 to 180 days. Maiden claim is on the dirt. It's a limited sampling, but it's really good. He's 3 for 9, 33%, 44% in the money, and a $3.46 return of investment. And you're right. If this horse is ready, you know, hasn't seen uh, since that one-turn mile at Gulfstream Park West in May. But little Todd, this one was so bad. Total turnaround last time out. Mm -hmm. A good performance. So showing uh, it's moving forward. Little Todd is taking a step forward. And when you say taking a step forward, I look at that last race, probably not a coincidence, it was off a trainer change to Gustavo Delgado, right? Yeah, yeah and he just moved up off that. He's the son of Gio Ponte, and I just thought he's on the right way. Then for the La Leander, hoping for a clean trip, had some trouble last time out. But if outside looking in is ready, it's over. Let's move on to race number six. Halfway point on this card, day 20 of 40. So half mile pull runs from this way and that way. And the late pick five does begin with this upcoming sixth race. We've got 12 even after scratches, a maxed out field of 12 ready to go in this opening leg that sees me using the favorite, who I think will be pretty tough, the number eight trouble in Phoenix. I also, as a uh, sort of a new face and a goofy looking horse, threw on the Peter Walder trainer change with Paco. Bad post, but a good price with the number 12, Whiskey Shiner. Three deep for me in race number seven, a 14 horse two year old maiden race on the dirt. Where, where else do you see that in South Florida? Here at GP or GPW? Uh, nowhere. And, uh, you know, you had the one on the ticket, a universal payday. I, I went that way. And I had some interest, the horse you didn't use in, in Money Come. I liked that horse before the layoff, but that is a wide open affair. 
Yeah, very good race there. Now, we've also got, as far as the eighth race goes, a two-year-old Philly special on the turf with a dozen, and much like you... <laughs> I'm laughing here right I now. I just, and again, I don't, like, absolutely love Molly Corbin. It's Me not neither. like she's, like, a three-to-five shot. She better really step forward off that so-so race at Presque Isle Downs. I absolutely believe it. And I looked up a stat, and, and Christophe Clement is 0 for 5 with horses going from a synthetic to a turf. Just something to keep in mind. But if this horse runs to its breeding, it's over. Yeah, I love Wolf. I know you do. That, you know that's my favorite sire, so that's why I went there. With the, you know, I, Warfront is my baby. So let's try to get Molly <laughs> Corbin home. Don't you wish you had a lifetime share to him right now? You'd be driving your uh, Lamborghini to uh, GPW every single day. Three deep in the uh, ninth. Uh, that race, again, it's neat even in these lower-level uh, claiming races where most of the horses are used to, say, seven-eighths around one turn, one-turn miles. In Hallandale, they've all got to go two turns today. So it's a nice little wrinkle and neat little uh, variable there. And then I'm too deep to wrap it up. you got Pletcher. you got a little Clement. What else do you need for the dough? Yeah, I mean, they're the logical two horses in there. And going back to the night just a minute, I got a 30-to-1 shot in there. It's not my long shot today. Just that's how wide open that race is with uh, uh, nephew Howard D. I just thought that this horse was as good as anybody in the race, so added it to my ticket. Now, 12 horses, round number one in this late pick five. We're on the turf, mile and a 16th. These are $8,000 claimers, and you've got a, a weird-looking horse, man, coming in from the Midwest, and a horse that's actually put up a very solid career by Langfuhr. Tell us a bit about your buddy, Dave Hoyt. Dave there. Hoyt is a five-time winner. He's back in South Florida and debuting for Angel Rodriguez. And here's the stat on Angel Rodriguez. First after a trainer sw switch, claimers on the turf. He's 4 for 12, 33%. 58% of the money with a positive return of investment. But this one posted back-to-back -back victories at Louisiana Downs. He's a well-traveled son of Langford. And the key for me, spotted perfectly at this $8,000 level. And look, the drop to eight when you talk about the level nearly worked. In fact, it did everything but get trouble in Phoenix, who I think is going to be favored here, right? Would you say uh, oh, this yeah, horse I think so, yeah. is the one to beat? I, and I was surprised that Dave Hoyt, I thought I was going to find a sneak in. I think he might be the morning line favorite in oh, here. I'm wow, not sure okay. about that, but I'm going to check it out while, uh, you, yeah, trouble in Phoenix is the one to beat. Let's go to race number six. Yeah, to take two. a look. Yeah, yeah. Dave Hoyt, favorite. Dave Hoyt's favorite. Three to one? Yep. Seven to two on to uh, two. Trouble in yeah. Phoenix. And here's Trouble in Phoenix last time out. Uh, hadn't really uh, shown a whole a uh, heck of a lot, per se, off the uh, claim for trainer Safi Joseph Jr., um, but responded with the drop to 8,000. And I pulled this replay from the starting gate just to show the kind of no-luck trip that this horse had, the number 10 in the uh, blue silks there, post number 10 on the afternoon of 11. And basically that run into the first turn hung out the dry four wide. That was a carbon copy of what would happen on the far turn where trouble in Phoenix didn't have any traffic trouble per se, but could never, ever, ever get over and save any sort of ground, get covered up. Uh, and uh, I thought the horse ran exceptionally well considering Again, three to four wide around two turns. When you're talking about a turf race, that is a tough trip to win with, and he nearly overcame it. Yeah, I mean, he's the one to beat. Dave Hoyt, like I said, I was looking for a little bit of a sneak play in there with Dave Hoyt, and, and I think when the smoke clears trouble in Phoenix, it'll be uh, favored in there. But you got to use number seven, Regal Force, I thought, somewhere on the ticket. Uh, it's second on the turf behind a repeat winner called Escape Velocity, and that's who trouble in Phoenix was running against. That's a couple of starts back, back on the grass. He ran okay. He was beating a length against those condition claimers, moved to a, a main track, listed as good. And I want to know, before you talk about your 12, yeah. hey, Abbott, I got to say it, is getting in this race. Pay attention to that 13 horse. Right right next door, in <laughs> fact, to the 12 Whiskey Shiner, who's just a bit of a, a goofy, big price connection stab. It's first time my man Peter Walder, a little Paco there. Horse will be a good price. Try to shake him up in a, a sixth race that has quite a bit going on. And that's a good segue into the seventh, isn't it? As we bring on a 14-horse <laughs> Florida bred, two-year-old maiden special eight, seven eights on the main track, and Mike Trombetta, another <laughs> familiar face, but a, an outfit, a barn that has not run horses down here over the last six months or so, arguably off the 70 fig at Parks. 
universal payday from the rail is the horse they're going to have to get around. Yeah, debuting locally, but going seven furlongs today after finishing that promising third. Those were a pair of five and a half furlong sprints, one at Parks and one at Delaware. It's Mike Trumbetta. You got leading jock Edgar Zionist here, but I want to hear about the three that I do not have on my ticket today. I like the rider change for the second consecutive race to Sammy Camacho with the horse, who I thought ran pretty well in a tough luck start most recently. We'll give you the view from basically our tower shot at the half mile pole because we've got the head on from the starting gate and you can watch the number four return the star and this horse pinballed around just a tough 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 break way behind the eight ball after really getting bumped hard and sandwiched on both sides there was no really great position after that but I was encouraged that he actually rallied and finished third beaten only four lengths or so in a field that I think bears watching that group on September 29th I'm going to try to uh, get return the star home who got a, a decent little figure as well in the process yeah that, that's a good uh, you know video to show he really got pinballed as you said at the start now let me tell you a little bit about the number two money come this didn't show tons of promise in his three race campaign at Gulfstream during the summer returns for Dan Silva I'm not too familiar with that trainer uh, uh, we'll find out about that. He's got apprentice Kevin Carmona in the saddle. And I just think this horse showed promise, comes back, might be able to run well in here and, and be part of the trier super. Sounds good. Second half of this card. Very much about the two-year-old maidens here in Miami Gardens as we move from that 14-horse cast to a nice 12-horse field with these two-year-old Philly $60,000 maiden special weight runners at seven and a half furlongs. There are some new shooters in here, none more important and none as short in the likely win pool than the number eight Molly Corbin, who you better, like we said, we both singled her. The intent is you're going to get a big jump forward here, second time out, first time on the turf. Yeah, I only got that 32 buyer figure on that uh, synthetic surface, so we'll see how this horse runs. But it's Christophe Clement, MSCL Jaramillo, and I'm just totally enamored with the breeding in here. You know, uh, have to a couple of Group 1 winners, all the different things. They paid 650000 as a weanling. Mm -hmm. That is incredible to me. So yep. we'll see how it runs. But I got some interest in the two Mozzabella in there, too. And it, you can see the rest of our selections. You know, if, any, if Mozzabella runs stretching out the seven and a half, made that five wide charge to finish fourth, was the favorite that afternoon. It's Jenna Antonucci, Miguel Vasquez. So if this horse is not up, that a horse like this with, with uh, you know, this uh, daughter of Gio Ponte could run well. All right. Christoph Coman, speaking of Gio Ponte, <laughs> trained him the right. multiple Eclipse Awards. And Molly Corbin, although dangerous in the eighth, not the only Christoph Coman trained two-year-old on the turf. We'll see in the latter portion of this October 27 card. More on that in just a second. Let's move back to the main. Our last dirt race over the fast main track uh, goes in race number nine, a 6250 claiming race in which, to be fair, if Indian Scout, the number seven, your top pick, is able to reprise that last effort He's probably going to be very tough to beat as the favorite, but I say that because you got about 21 bucks to win on this horse last time out. <laughs> yeah, you know, six for nine in the money at the distance, returning to Gulfstream West, fresh off that uh, victory, going to one turn mile across town. Steve Town, journeyman Manuel Cruz in the saddle today. I just thought it myself was between the seven and the five in that race, and I mentioned ha nephew Howard D stretching out to a mile. This horse has run three times in a mile, a win in two seconds. He showed speedy tired. But that could help him with this uh, journey around two turns. If you're looking for a price horse, maybe that's the one. Well, it's first time Bob DeBona, yeah, too. That's yeah. a big trainer change for that horse. Uh, the number five horse, WW Concerto. Is the, is the DeBona trainer change your 20 to 1 shot that you had yeah, mentioned? Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. 30 yeah. to 1. 30 to 1. Ooh, I Bob. think. Yeah. I think. Pretty well, sure. horse looks pretty ugly on paper. Yeah. Spin <laughs> cycle, spin cycle from the rail and Francesco appeal. In addition to Indian Scout, thought one of those three would probably get it done. I'm going to take Francesco appeal. Does strike me as kind of a one pace grinder who's best when he can make that one run. Now, as we wrap up the action here, race number ten, another two year old special weight. We had the gals on the turf in the eighth. We'll bring on the Colts and Geldings here in the nightcap, and another Christophe Kamad uh, trained uh, horse at a uh, big time pedigree uh, by Giants. Causeway, and that's the eighth, the Mon Park, who uh, ran well with a pretty good trip and a, a pretty rare trip for us <laughs> on this show in terms of replays going up to Delaware Park. But let's do it. Earlier this month, just a few weeks ago on October 3rd, you'll see this uh, Sutter Giants Causeway in a homebred basically sit on the rail throughout. But I, I appreciated watching this fact that he never backed down and was stayed on very stubbornly trying to catch 
a wire-to-wire -wire winner. I can tell you, Thamon Park, the first horse to return from this maiden turf race at Delaware, and he's in the green silks there, second right now down inside. Yeah, it was very game, and I want to show you uh, when this race ends. Uh, just a quick stat on Mr. Christophe Clement uh, with his domestic shippers on the turf coming into Gulfstream Park West. He's five for 31, 16 percent, 52 percent in the money, and a dollar 23 return of investment. And I thought it would be better than that, mm -hmm. but uh, not Gulfstream. This is Gulfstream Park West. Right. And Christoph, over the years, not that that's a hundred horse sample per right. se, right. but he is shown to be sending some horses down that he probably thinks and feels just fit a little better say in late October, early November, and he allows some of his horses to get acclimated to the uh, weather here, just the overall conditions in South Florida. False info, the uh, Pletcher Rapoli first are going to cap my exacta with Nick Juarez, hopefully, and you're actually taking a little, your nickname in college, right? Mega Bucks? Mega Bucks, yeah. They're debuting locally for Mike Trombetta. Came with a neck of beating a repeat winner called Yowza, 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 going a mile on the Laurel Turf, trying to beat, uh, be, you know, just beat a couple of the heavy heads in the air with our leading rider. That was my thought process. Edgar Zayas, 25 wins here at the meet and counting. He currently owns an eight-win lead over Misael Jaramillo. And the good news for those guys and us as racing fans, we get to see them in action today. In fact, 10 races coming up here on day 20 at GPW. Pete Aiello, in the meantime, is standing by with those scratches and changes. Tis Robert Charles broke his maiden at Gulfstream Park.